In just 14 hours, some of the country's most powerful politicians will meet face to face here in Nevada. That'll be for the first Democratic candidates form in the race for the White House. Tonight, we'll look at why our state has become so important in choosing a new leader for America. Also tonight, when they heard that it, there was going to be a little extra, they just kind of went, wow, really? You're, you're, you're not kidding? It works in the business world. Could bonuses work for education as well? Some schools in Clark County are giving it a shot. How it could end up helping everyone, not just the superstar teachers. And you got to see this one. A News 3 staffer manages to get on pride fighting Frank Trigg's bad side. Don't drift off. News 3 at 10 on the CW starts right now. This is News 3 at 10 on the CW Las Vegas with Nina Redditch and Jim Snyder. Good evening to you. Tomorrow afternoon, our state could be hosting the next president of the United States. Almost all of the declared Democratic candidates for the White House will be up in Carson City. And what happens there could set the tone for the next year and a half of presidential politics. Steve Krupe joins us tonight with more. And Steve, it's an important time for the country, but it's especially important for the Silver State. You bet, Nina. And this may be the biggest crowd ever of presidential contenders to come to this state all at once. Tomorrow, eight of the Democrats vying for the White House are coming to Carson Carson City hoping to make an early impression on the voters here and across the country. Hillary Clinton, Christopher Dodd, Joe Biden, and John Edwards, they're all coming, and that is just half of the lineup. The candidates' forum involving only Democrats is a clear indication that Nevada has moved way up in the hierarchy of states, hoping to have an early influence on the election. They are going to spend a lot of time in Nevada for two reasons. One, the primary has been moved up, and two, if it's a close race, this is one of those states could, that could go either way, depending on how much effort you put into the state. The only well-known Democrat in the race who's not attending the forum is Barack Obama. He already came to Las Vegas over the weekend. Nevada, I want to work with you. I want to be your president. But I also want you to take this country back. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. Obama says a scheduling conflict is keeping him away from the event in Carson City. But even without Obama, the gathering of presidential hopefuls will get nationwide exposure. C-SPAN will cover it live. And network commentator George Stephanopoulos will be the moderator. A labor union that represents government workers is sponsoring tomorrow's forum, and the number one topic is expected to be health care, and you can count on the fact that Nevada will be again on the itinerary of many of those candidates in the months ahead. Nina. Steve, thank you. A quick reminder tonight, the Candidates Forum takes place at the Carson City Community Center. The whole thing starts at noon. News 3's Kendall Tenney will be up there tomorrow covering it all as it happens. And while the national candidates have that forum up in Carson City, just down the road, state lawmakers will be debating a new strategy designed to promote excellence in our schools. Some question whether a merit pay system that works in the business world will work for teachers, too. As Kendall Tenney and the Kids First Team found out, the idea is already on the fast track here in Clark County. But we've added a twist that helps spread the wealth a bit. Can you find a way with your partner to show me 17 cents with less coins? The lesson in Mr. McCarthy's second grade class this morning is about money. So show me how you would trade five pennies for one nickel. Which is also a big topic these days in Carson City. I don't see a reason why you wouldn't reward somebody for doing a job that goes above and beyond. Mr. McCarthy is a teacher at Cauley Elementary, one of the Clark County School District's four empowerment schools. Careful, 25 and 10 more. Specifics are still being hammered out, but generally speaking, if these students reach certain benchmarks in areas like test scores, attendance, and discipline, not only will Mr. McCarthy get a bonus through so-called incentive or merit pay, Take a look at that one. How many so will Mrs. Ryan. Mrs. Danielson and Mrs. Shepard. All staff would receive an incentive pay. It's meaning all staff, not just for one. It's all for one. What they don't want to do is to pit teacher against teacher. The Clark County Education Association has been working with the school district on the plan for the four empowerment schools. And they've given legislators a model of what they call the right way to balance pay with performance. Unfortunately, the experience has been that it's a way of, of giving a few teachers uh, a raise, which uh, basically becomes a cheap way of doing things. But what we've said is they have to be global. Everybody at a school has to be able to, to share in it. Back at Cully, that's a sentiment with which teachers agree. When they heard that it, there was going to be a little extra, they just kind of went, wow, really? You're, you're, you're not kidding? 
And if the school hits its benchmarks, perhaps students won't be the only ones counting more dollars and cents. Can you find a way to make 17 cents for me? Now the district will outline those benchmarks the students need to reach and how much the teacher bonuses would work out to in the next few weeks. The teachers union would still have to sign off on this plan. Representatives from the lead animal shelter went before the county commission today explaining how they plan to prevent another deadly disease outbreak. But animal activists who were there say the county needs to step in and take more drastic measures. And, um, I had high hopes. I had high hopes. I think a lot of people did. We really hoped that lead was going to step up and, and, you know, make the shelter a better place and, you know, be a no-kill shelter and all that. And when I went down there, the conditions were unbelievable. They were horrifying. Grayson also says she wants the Animal Foundation's board of directors out and wants the county to take over the shelter. But representatives from the Animal Foundation say they have everything under control. We've got a handle on this. People understand our level of commitment, the uh, expertise that we bring to the table, and moreover, the new guidance that we have. Uh, 34 years of experience in our uh, director of animal operations, and more importantly, input uh, from the most respected humane organization, animal organization, in the world today. So that's our commitment. We brought this to a head. We made these changes. We did it in a public forum because that's the way that we work. Here are the changes in store for the lead animal shelter. All animals at the shelter will now be vaccinated, even those expected to be euthanized. Animals considered unadoptable will be euthanized within 72 hours. Healthy, adoptable animals will be kept alive for 120 days. Lead expects to have its adoption center back up and running by the end of the week. Your loyalty to your job may be tested in the next couple of days. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous, but there's some changes coming for the end of the week, right, Dan? Yeah, it's going to be beautiful tomorrow. We do have a storm system moving our way for Thursday night into Friday. We'll talk about the changes coming up. But did I see at the top of this newscast where our floor director, Adrian, gets choked by a mixed martial arts expert? You, you did. did indeed. I you were not mistaken. I can't wait. wait. It, People have been wanting to choke Adrian for years now. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, this is finally we get we get to do it under the guise of the show tonight. <laughs> Temperatures from the Wells Fargo Weather Net stations into the 40s right now. 44 Lakes East down to I was kidding. I love Adrian. Give me a hug. No, okay. He's a little shy. Yeah, well, wait till he gets choked out here. 49 degrees uh, downtown here at the studios. Tonight, here's how low we think we'll go. Pretty close to average at most spots. 28 at Tonopah, 29 at Alamo, 39 at Overton, 43 at Lake Mead, and 42 degrees here in Las Vegas. Tomorrow, gorgeous. 67, sunny, winds not even an issue. If you like today, you're going to love tomorrow. However, Nina was talking about this. We do have a winter storm watch for Thursday afternoon through Friday morning for the southern Sierra, including the cities of Aspendale and Mount Whitney, up to a foot of snow possible, and that means we'll have a chance of rain here in the valley, and we'll put a little finer point on that coming up in a few more minutes. For now, back to you. Dana, thank you. The court battle between Anna Nicole Smith's boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend, and her mother came to a head today in a Florida courtroom. For the first time, all three came together to lay claim to Anna Nicole's remains. Each has a different idea of where she should be buried. Also at issue, that ongoing custody dispute concerning her infant daughter. Kristen Dahlgren has the latest from Fort Lauderdale. Madam Clerk, would you swear in the first witness? For the first time, Howard K. Stern under oath, describing his relationship with Anna Nicole Smith. She was my best friend, my lover, the mother of my daughter. It's everything to me. But with Anna's ex-boyfriend Larry Burkhead just feet away, the question over whether Danny Lynn really is his daughter was never far from the surface. Who's the father? And that's my next point, if I may. Don't I need to know who no. a father is? No, no. Let me address this. Yes. But ultimately, the judge decided to stay away from the sordid paternity fight, focusing on the issue at hand. Who would get custody of Anna Nicole's body? Stern wants to bring Anna Nicole back to the Bahamas, where her son Daniel is buried. He said the star was outraged at her estranged mother, Virgie Arthur, and would have never wanted her to have custody of her remains. It really bothered Anna when Virgie went to the media and said that either Anna or I had murdered Daniel. But on the stand, Anna's mother testified it was her daughter's drug use that ruined their relationship, and in spite of it all, they still occasionally talked. Often, though, not very often, though, after she started drugs. 
once every three or four months I would hear from her. She'd call me in the middle of the night. And what kind of condition was she in when the... Drugged. Like everything in this case, it is a complicated issue crossing state and international lines, a tangled web of conflicting stories and competing claims. Christian Dahlgren, NBC News, Fort Lauderdale. A judge in California has decided not to relinquish control over the paternity case being heard there, but he also refused to order that the baby, Danny Lynn, be brought there from the Bahamas. There is another paternity hearing scheduled in the Bahamas for this Thursday. Pop star Britney Spears in the public eye the last few days for weird behavior, including shaving her head, has checked herself into rehab now. Last Friday, she took clippers to her head at a salon in L.A. Today, her manager announced the singer has entered an L.A. area substance abuse facility at the urging of her family. A week ago, she checked herself into a clinic on the island of Antigua. That stint only lasted about 24 hours. Spears has been partying pretty heavily recently, even passing out at her own New Year's Eve party here in Las Vegas. Her manager says she hopes the paparazzi will respect her privacy and leave her family and friends alone too. Mardi Gras is in full swing down in New Orleans, the second since Hurricane Katrina. The crowds this year are bigger than last and as rowdy as they've ever been. Everyone's got their party yell. Why city leaders say this year's party might be just the thing to get the Big Easy back on its feet. Plus, JetBlue is making amends for all of its recent flight delays with a new customer's bill of rights. How much stranded flyers could get for their trouble. Also ahead, we've been talking about it. That's camera operator uh, Adrian Crooks. We could call it a mixed martial arts demonstration or just say Adrian finally gets what's coming to him. Is it sleepy time for AC? Find out later in the zone. You're watching News 3 at 10 on the CW Las Vegas. percent of the market share, which is very good. The Chinese island of Macau has officially surpassed Las Vegas as the gambling capital of the world, according to industry and government figures, that is. New York Times reports that gambling revenue jumped 22 percent last year to almost seven billion dollars. Here in Las Vegas, we took in about six and a half billion. Development experts say we can't count Las Vegas out just yet, though. Macau is an island, has only a limited amount of land to develop. Las Vegas, on the other hand, always growing outward and redeveloping its properties to keep up with demand. And they don't have David Hasselhoff either. Right, the right? Hoff. In drag to boot. Well, we can all breathe a big sigh of relief. Turns out a giant asteroid that scientists thought might hit the Earth soon will probably miss us. That's just definitely good news. This is the asteroid Apophis, named after the Egyptian god of destruction. Three years ago, astronomers said it had a 1 in 37 chance of hitting the Earth on April 13, 2036. That would not be good. Catastrophic, taking out a landmass the size of England. Today, that chance was downgraded, though, to 1 in 45,000. Still, the possibility has galvanized an international group of astronomers. Today, they announced they will approach the United Nations. They want an open discussion about near-Earth asteroids to come... Asteroids. To, <laughs> I made up a whole new word there. Near-Earth asteroids to come up with possible solutions. Asteroids, that's a good yeah. one. From saving the Earth from giant asteroids to saving it one light bulb at a time. Today, the nation of Australia announced it's making the switch from standard bulbs to fluorescence. Today, the Australian government its plan to phase out the standard incandescent bulbs. By the year 2012, all light bulbs in every government building will be energy-saving fluorescents. Australian Prime Minister John Howard says it's a no-brainer since fluorescents use only about 20% of the power to produce the same amount of light and they last longer. So what is going on with celebs and their hair these days? First Britney Spears goes bald, now Donald Trump could be next. Word is he's putting his much talked about hair on the line for a wrestling match. According to World Wrestling Entertainment, Trump and WWE owner Vince McMahon will each pick a wrestler to represent them in a match. The loser will get his head shaved. We all know Trump loves that do of his. He has not confirmed or denied his involvement in this bald bet yet. I heard Sue and Mitch talking about this on the noon show earlier today. Apparently it's happening on April 1st. 
Ah. So maybe they're going to chalk it up to April Fool's Day, especially if Donald loses, right? Are we being played? I don't yeah, know. maybe play. once again by Donald Trump. <laughs> I would love to see that head get shaved. No kidding. Wouldn't people. that be yes. cool? Yeah, yeah, but he defends it. He loves it. He talks about it's the not system. even. It's not yeah. even a come over. No. It's a come forward and then a yeah. loop back. Well, and and well the, you put a lot what, of thought into this. What happens really in have. the wind? It's like a whole wall of hair that moves right. as opposed to just one little section. He, yeah. he has right? a fin, and it's just <laughs> like it this yeah. in the air. It could be dangerous. It could be. We may have some winds around here Thursday. <laughs> what a transition. Awesome. If Donald Trump's in town Thursday, the fin will be evident. <laughs> From the Black Mountain camera, beautiful shot. I like that Black Mountain camera. It just uh, shows the city so well. Uh, current temperature right now of 48 degrees. Winds out of the west at 3. So winds not an issue tonight, won't be tomorrow. They pick up on Thursday as we have an approaching frontal system. 58 is all today. We thought we'd warm up a little bit more than that, but we didn't. As the cold front moved through last night and gave us the rain showers, we had cooler air move in behind the front as per usual, and it's just kind of stuck around all day. Four below the average on the low end at 38. Record uh, high for the day, 79. Sunrise coming at 623. Uh, current temperatures from the Wells Fargo Weather Network all into the 40s right now as we head into the lower 40s for lows, maybe even a bit lower than that. High temps today, Reno, two degrees warmer than Las Vegas. Elko was only four degrees cooler than Las Vegas, and that's very unusual for February that Elko is that close to the daytime high of Las Vegas. Lots of high pressure. That stabilized things pretty well. Last night we had some gusty conditions as the cold front moved through. More sunshine tomorrow, and it's going to be about 10 degrees warmer than it was today uh, into the upper 60s instead of the upper 50s. Futurecast uh, does bring that storm onto the west coast. In fact, we're expecting heavy rain as early as tomorrow in northern California. Snow in the higher elevations. There is a winter storm watch in effect for the southern Sierra, and we suspect that some of that's going to spill over into southern Nevada by Thursday night into Friday. That means we'll have a chance of rain right here in the Las Vegas Valley. Here's that area of low pressure. That speckled effect behind it is cooler air, so that's moving our way too. That won't arrive until Friday. First thing you're going to notice, breezes pick up on Thursday. Mostly sunny Thursday, but windy. By Thursday night, cloudy. By Thursday night, chance of rain into Friday. And also cooler air moves in toward the end of the week. We're going to go from 69 Thursday to mid-50s on Friday. We're going to dump about 15 degrees of temp. All right, east of the Continental Divide. Lots of snow last week. Today, that was rain, and they're getting a fair amount of it down in the southeast. And down into central Florida, they had this. Smoke from a controlled burn combined with fog reduced visibilities drastically. They had to close 17 miles of the highway because people simply could not see far enough in front of them. Scary situation. Travel forecast for midweek. 54 degrees at Louisville, 38 at Detroit, 43 in Minneapolis. They're going to have the bathing suits on there tomorrow. 72 at Phoenix, 61 degrees at Albuquerque, 55 at Denver, 62 at Kansas City, and a chance of rain up and down the West Coast because that storm system's moving on shore. Tonight here in the Valley, clear, calm, cool, down to 42, winds 5 to 10. Tomorrow we warm up about 10 degrees into the 70s at Mesquite, Overton, Lake Mead, 72 at Laughlin, 66 at Boulder City, 64 at Alamo. Kids' first forecast, temperature in the 40s as the kids head out to the bus stop. Winds out of the northeast 5 to 10 and sunny. Winds will shift in the afternoon out of the south, but still not get very strong. Sunshine and 67. That would be 9 degrees warmer than today if we get there, and I think we will. 69 and breezy on Thursday, increasing clouds at night, and a decent shot of some rain Thursday night into Friday, cooling down to 56. This weekend, decent. Great thing about these little storms, though, they just move so they, they move through so quickly, so we kind of get a taste of the rain for a yep, little bit, yep. and then we get sunny skies again. Yep, I like it. We get the free water to boot. Right, right I cool. know, I know. We, well, hey, we could use every drop, right? Absolutely. All right, sir. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Still ahead tonight, beads, booze, and a boost of morale, the impact of this year's Mardi Gras party on the people of New Orleans. And after taking a serious blow to its reputation, JetBlue is looking to regain consumer confidence. Details about their new customer bill of rights coming up on News 3 at 10 on the CW Las Vegas.
It's Mardi Gras and in New Orleans the crowds are bigger than last year. The tourists are back, but less than half of the city's population has returned since Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast 18 months ago. City leaders are hoping the Mardi Gras celebration will give the local economy the jump start it so desperately needs. On this final day of celebrations in New Orleans, on this second post-Katrina Mardi Gras, the joint is hopping. Scores of people showed up hours ahead of time to get the best spots for parade watching. In the French Quarter, there's dancing in the streets, costumes all over the place, and all the revelry that Fat Tuesday is known for. The crowds are bigger than last year. Hotels are 80 to 100% full. Airlines added extra flights. All of it great news in a city where many livelihoods depend on tourism. For some, it's a homecoming and a show of support. Camaraderie, especially despite what happened with Hurricane Katrina. It takes everybody out of the darkness and it lets them open up their hearts and their lives again to knowing, hey, we can be happy again. A message that rings loud and clear in a battered city in need of a break. City leaders hope this uh, second post-Katrina Mardi Gras will let the world know that they are open for business and ready to rebuild. Next year should be even bigger with the Sugar Bowl, Mardi Gras, and the NBA All-Star Game all happening in New Orleans one right after another. Nearly a week after a snowstorm paralyzed the airline, JetBlue is trying to repair its reputation with passengers. They've taken some pretty drastic measures, including a new customer's bill of rights. A bill of rights for air travelers has been kicked around in Congress for years now, but as a result of last week's mess, JetBlue has opted to go it alone. Their bill promises a few things. Let flyers get off the plane if they have to sit on the tarmac for more than five hours. Compensate customers based on the length of their delays. 30 minutes gets you $25, $50 for two to four hours, and a free one-way ticket for more than four hours. And the big one, $1,000 if your flight is overbooked. That could add up to about $30 million just for the folks who were delayed last week. Uh, we are going to go overboard to make sure that uh, we get the credit back to the customers, that we apologize, that we explain what happened. More importantly, that we explain why this will never happen again. And then when we do that, our quarters, uh, you know, we're going to offer something that no other airline will offer customers. And we're going to be held accountable and a laser beam focus by this Bill of Rights that we're going to have with us every day. Today, the House Aviation Subcommittee called on other airlines to follow JetBlue's lead. That call comes with a warning. If the other airlines don't take steps, they might be forced to. In the meantime, JetBlue's scheduled flights appear to be up to speed. Out at McCarran, all, arriver, all arrivals and departures for that airline are on time tonight. All right, it's been the talk of our newsroom all afternoon. Pride Fighting's Frank Trigg stopped by our studio today. And he left quite an impression on one of our staffers. See the video in our next half hour of News 3 at 10 on the CW Las Vegas. This is News 3 at 10 on the CW Las Vegas with Nina Redditch and Jim Snyder. Welcome back. One of the busiest roads in southern Nevada is starting to see some major improvements. Blue Diamond Road has a deadly reputation well earned. Troopers have handled dozens of crashes since the far southwest part of the valley really started to boom. Blue Diamond Road is just south of the 215. It runs along the developing southwest area of town. Construction crews have already completed the I-15 Blue Diamond interchange. And as you head west, the once two-lane road already has a section with four lanes in each direction. Even though the work is far from finished, businesses in the area are already feeling the effects. I'm seeing a huge difference. Yeah, it looks really good. It's easy, a lot easier to get to work, to and from work, and for the customers to get in and out. The widening of Blue Diamond Road will continue all the way to the Rainbow intersection. It won't be complete, though, until sometime next year. She was pausing while waiting for this thing to come up, and it, you yes. al we almost made it. It's one of those timing things. Anyway, now that the All-Star Weekend is in the rearview mirror, a lot of locals are saying good riddance after the shootings, the fights, and the traffic backups. Las Vegas Mayor Oscar Goodman is taking a more nostalgic view, though. Today, Denise Roche sat down with the mayor to find out if he thinks the All-Star performance will help or hurt our chances of getting a team. This stuff right here, that's like a little bit of blood splatter, and you can see where the bullets hit right here. At least two or three of them hit right there. Well, it was uh, one of the great weekends that we experienced uh, in Las Vegas' history. There's a little blood splatter right there. Uh, everybody had a great time. 
Uh, it was uh, terrific economically for the community here. It uh, put us on the map. I said nobody was prepared enough as, you know, as, as prepared as we should have been. It's almost as if they're talking about two different weekends. The mayor's version of the NBA crowd. Bosch dunked it as wide open. And what some locals witnessed firsthand on the strip. We had to shut our business down because of it. They were peeing all over everything. They come in here and took over everything. In today's Review Journal, letters to the editor read the same way. Words like rude, loud, and obnoxious used to describe the, quote, NBA element. Fabio Mejia works at the Strip Liquor Store and saw some of it for himself. Uh, it was real chaotic. Um, just no, no control over the crowd. Just, I don't know. Was it worse than New Year's Eve? Yes, definitely. On Saturday, a man was shot right outside the liquor store. Several people were arrested, and even today, there is evidence of what happened. There's blood right here, too. Still, Mayor Goodman says with thousands of people in town, a few problems are to be expected. He thinks the good of All-Star Weekend outweighs the bad. I saw the great contribution that the NBA made in the schools. I went to the community centers. I saw the great contribution NBA Cares did there, the Habitat to Humanity. I mean, all of these good things. So if there were a couple of, uh, you know, uh, sour apples in the bushel, uh, that's a shame. Some people we talked to here along the Strip said they don't want to say anything terribly negative on camera because they're big fans of the NBA and having the players in town was exciting. It's just some of the fans they could do without. So the question remains, what happens if Las Vegas gets its own team? Something Mayor Goodman believes will happen. Here's the steal. In fact, he'll make a proposal to the owners by the end of April. Back at the liquor store, Mejia spent today restocking the shelves. He says if tourists were rowdy this weekend, they also spent money. But bottom line... Would you want to work it again, I guess, I'm asking? No. <laughs> Denise Roche, News 3. Well, the mayor says if a few people were rude or didn't tip well, that we should all take it in stride. He points out you can't teach people manners. And while the city did experience some rowdy tourists over the weekend, the mayor's optimism was echoed today by the city's top cop. Sheriff Doug Gillespie is calling the All-Star Weekend a success, thanks mainly to Metro's strict enforcement policies. Here's a look at the numbers. In all, 403 arrests were made over the weekend. That's 399 for Metro, 4 for NHP. While most of the problems were blamed on out-of-towners, 172 locals were also brought in. That's just a few dozen less than the visitors total. 239 of those arrests were for vice-related crimes like drugs and prostitution. 164 were, were for other offenses like disorderly conduct, battery, burglary, and robbery. Sheriff Gillespie says given the number of people who were in town, he's not surprised by the number of arrests made. Um, but I think overall, based on my interaction with people that were in our command post and overseeing the operations of this event day to day, um, you know, felt it was a good event. And I think that's indicative of the, the number of arrests that you've seen over, over the days. I don't consider them to be excessive. And while Sheriff Gillespie is happy with the numbers from over the weekend, Metro is putting out the call tonight for help in tracking down the gunman from that shooting outside the Minx Strip Club yesterday morning. Two men and a woman had to be rushed to the hospital with gunshot wounds. Tennessee Titans quarterback Adam Pacman Jones was inside at the time. News 3 has confirmed that detectives did question him, but his attorney, in, attorney insists that he is not a suspect. He's not a suspect. He's not in trouble. He's not, he's not being questioned as a suspect. All he's doing is cooperating as a witness. Bye. This is not the first time Jones has had some sort of run-in with the law. He has faced criminal charges three times since the Titans drafted him in 2005. All of those incidents involve nightclubs in Tennessee. If you have any information about the incident at Minx, call Crime Stoppers. That number, 385-5555. Longtime county commissioner and sometime political lightning rod, Yvonne Atkinson Gates, stepped down from her position today. Look back over 22 years and 14 plus years here at the county, and I have to say that in light of all of the growth that we have experienced, it has been wonderful.
Atkinson Gates represented District D for the county. She announced her retirement last month. She's been at the center of a number of ethics inquiries during her time with the county. The decision to step down has some wondering if it has anything to do with a recent investigation that found she failed to show up more than two to two more than two dozen meetings since 05. Despite those questions, Atkinson Gates, as you could tell there, was emotional during her send off today. I really appreciate working with all of you. I'm going to miss all of you, but it's time for me to go. Las Vegas City Councilman Lawrence Weekly has been chosen by the governor to finish out Atkinson Gates term that expires in January of 09. Now Atkinson Gates says she plans to focus on her family and her business. Up next, we're taking a closer look at minority-owned businesses here in Clark County. There are lessons to be learned from the folks who lay it on the line every day for the American dream. I mean, if you set your mind to it, no matter how high that goal is, you dream big because, I mean, it, it can happen. It happened for me. It could happen for them. There you go, how some successful entrepreneurs are reaching back to help others just getting their start. It's up next on News 3 at 10 on The CW Las Vegas. Beautiful night on the beautiful Las Vegas Strip. It is a little bit cool outside, 48 degrees. Winds not contributing to the wind chill much out of the west at three miles per hour. Humidity at 49%. And here we go, down to 42 tonight. Clear skies, calm conditions. Tomorrow we warm up about 10 degrees. 70 at Mesquite, 72 at Overton, Lake Mead and Laughlin. And uh, 64 degrees at Alamo with 48 up on the mound. Here in Las Vegas, the kids' first forecast calls for a temperature in the 40s as the kids head out to the bus stop. Sunshine, winds out of the northeast in the morning. They'll be shifting to out of the south in the afternoon. 67 for high, plenty of sunshine. We do have an approaching trough, a frontal system. Yes, a storm system. Breezes pick up Thursday and clouds Thursday night with a chance of rain Thursday night through Friday. Much cooler. But we clear out, warm up for the weekend. Jim? All right, Dana, thank you. This is Black History Month, and tonight we're taking a closer look at African-American-owned businesses here in the Valley. We found a number of black business owners who are beating the odds every day to capture the American dream. And a few of them are lending a helping hand to those coming up behind them. It's an overwhelming feeling to know that if, when you set goals, and, and I, I stress this with my students, it, it, the sky is the limit. I Gwen mean, Brema's goal was to take her years of experience as a hairstylist and small business owner and pass that knowledge on to a new generation. And I come in with the um, frame of mind that I am a hero to my students. Um, I respect them, they respect me. Um, they've watched the accomplishments of the school. And the school has accomplished a lot. Moving into an 11,000 square foot facility, it's the first African American owned cosmetology school in Nevada. I mean, if you set your mind to it, no matter how high that goal is, you dream big because, I mean, it, it can happen. It happened for me, it could happen for them. Thank you for calling in the beginning. How may I help you? The dream also came true for small business owner B.J. Chatham, but not without a struggle. I don't necessarily have the educational background or come from uh, the right side of the tracks, but I've worked hard, uh, established a work ethic. B.J. says she wouldn't let race or sex hold her back. Instead, she built her business on a philosophy of honesty and integrity and says that's helped her through the toughest obstacle any business faces. They have to realize that uh, it's going to start with a lot of hard work and that uh, no one's here to give you anything. You're going to have to bring something to the table. Here in Clark County, there are fewer than 4,000 African-American owned businesses and competition is really tough. Revenues for minority owned businesses tend to fall flat when you compare them to the general business community. But that said, the minority sector is growing faster right now than all other businesses. A piano teacher in Philadelphia has reason to be proud. A student's performance has been seen by thousands over the internet. How her pet transformed into a feline prodigy. Up next on News 3 at 10 on the CW Las Vegas.
But without opposable thumbs, you wouldn't think cat paws <laughs> would really lend themselves to playing the piano. But think again. <laughs> Meet Nora the cat. Nora's been tickling the ivories for almost two years now after watching her owner, who happens to be a piano teacher, give lessons. Nora's owner taped her playing the piano and posted the video on YouTube so her niece in Wyoming could actually see the cat in action. It's amazing how quickly things spread these days. Looks like uh, more than her just just her niece took a peek. That video has been played more than 650,000 times now. Wow, pretty yeah. music by the kitty. And speaking of video that should end up <laughs> yes. on YouTube. Oh, yes. We have yes. some of that Good tonight. Stuff coming up, we talked to Pride Fighting's Frank Trigg and so did our camera guy AC, although he really didn't say too much. <laughs> sort of. He sort of yeah. talked to him. One time. Yeah, we'll have that thing. coming up and we'll save the video and you and OV trying to punch that NCAA tournament ticket. Did they get it done? We'll tell you next on The Zone. It's time for News 3 Sports Zone with Kevin West. Five, six, seven seconds. Okay. <laughs> oh, good night. Good night. Three. Oh yeah, welcome to the zone. More from Pride Fighting's Frank Trigg later in the show. Trust me, you do not want to miss more of that. Plus the Gladiators had a little scrimmage over at the Orleans and the NBA back in action. But we start out with the UNLV basketball team. Rebs hosting 14th ranked Air Force tonight. At 22-6, UNLV off to their best start since the 91-92 season. After I show you what happened tonight, you'll know why it just got better. This one back and forth in the first half. Late first, Michael Ume this steal the lay-in. Rebs by three. Under a minute to go in the first half now. Joel Anthony, nice drop step. Big dunk. Rebs go to the breakup one, 31-30. How about Wink Adams? Heard slam dunk champ Gerald Green say his old high school teammate will play in the NBA someday. Adams the hoop and the foul. Rebs by seven. Great pass by Kevin Kruger, one of ten assists. Also had 14 points, nine of them free throws. Air Force hangs around though. Shot 39 threes, made 11 of them. Cut the UNLV lead to two, but Wendell White gets the bucket right there. UNLV up by eight, and then Kruger to Joel Anthony. The big dunk there for Anthony. Two of his ten, and UNLV goes on to win by ten, 60 to 50. And how long has it been since they had a win like this? Well, yeah, the fans storm the floor. UNLV 15 and one at home. It's not official, but this team's going to the big dance. Well, if, if they were selecting today, I'll keep saying that, but they're not. You know, we, we'll, we'll approach it uh, just like uh, the only healthy way to do, and that is like we need one more every time we line up and play. I don't know, man. We got New Mexico coming up. We win that one. You can ask me the same thing, then I'll say Colorado State. So uh, we'll just. What do just, you feel like this one gets you into the tournament? Um, you know, I'd hope so, honestly. Uh, I think we've put together a pretty good resume. But Yes, they have. Rebs travel to New Mexico next Wednesday. Lobos dropping in overtime tonight, 81-74. NBA back in action. Hopefully they're all rested and ready to go after that fun in Las Vegas. Phoenix still running. Sean Marion, 31. Suns route the Clippers, 115 to 90. Well, Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather ready to break all kinds of boxing records when they meet at the MGM for their May 5th fight. Their multi-city media tour began today in New York. You know, tickets for for this fight sold out in three hours, sellout gate of 19 mil, and Nevada record now working on that pay per view. On May 5th, when I touch you, you're, you're gonna hurt for a week. You're gonna hurt for a week. And believe me, come May 5th, I'm gonna give you something to cry about. Everybody know out there, I don't, I don't have to cry, I don't have to complain, I don't say nothing. You put him in front of me, and I'll beat him. I'm the top dog in the sport, that's why he's facing me. Okay, taking a break. Up next, Frank Trigg talks about this weekend's Pride Fighting Championships. And, and oh yeah, he chokes out our floor director as well. That's next on The Zone. And welcome back to the Sports Zone. We always love it when Frank Trigg <laughs> stops by. We normally talk to Frank Trigg about commentating for the Pride Fighting Championships. This week, though, you're setting a little history on Saturday, fighting and commentating. Yeah, sports broadcast history. Some simple, you yeah. know, go to fight early in the night, first or second fight of the night, and then uh, take a shower, 
hopefully just have to put a little ice on a couple <laughs> of swelling, swelling eyes and then uh, go back out and do my job commentating. Okay, well, the Pride Fighting Championships back at the Thomas & Mack on Saturday for the second time. I know the first one was a sold-out event. Still some tickets available for this one, but talk about the main event. It is a great main event between Silva. The main event is two-time Olympian Dan Henderson mm -hmm. versus uh, Vanderlei Silva, who is right now arguably the best guy at 205. At pro, and one of the best guys pound for pound in the entire world at 205. Dan Henderson has the belt at 185 for pride. He is actually, has potentially the chance to break it and make it so he owns two belts. 185, 205, which is going to make Dan Henderson a very busy man, you know, over, over the next year sure. if he wins both belts. Right. Now, here's the thing. The last time they fought six years ago, the first loss Dan Henderson ever had was to Vanderlei Silva. He wants to get, wants to revenge this. He's in great shape, the best shape we've seen in a long time. He's ready to go for this fight. Okay, well, second time Pride is in town. Every time Pride comes to town, Frank, we have this conversation about Pride UFC. Why can't Pride and UFC just get together and do an old AFL, NFL, head-to-head, -head, and let's see who's best? It, it could. Absolutely could happen. And this is you know, it's one of the things that Pride has been talking about. The American president, Ed Fishman, has been really discussing this very heavily the last couple of days. And, and with me, the last couple of weeks, kind of going over it, how it should happen. In my mind, no, mind you, I'm just a color commentator, <laughs> fighter for these guys. I don't have you know, any power pull. But to me, it makes sense. We should take the number one guy for UFC, the number one guy for Pride, have them battle each other off. Let's make it interesting. Number one versus number one at each organization. Number two versus number two at each organization. There's eight fights. Now we have a full card. We can make it happen. Pride pays for their guys. UFC pays for their guys. Put, you know, their names in a hat. You pick them out, and you pick them out, you know, octagon versus ring, octagon right. versus ring. You put them in there, and you have the fight go. Well, and what, It'd be great. Whoa, well, oh, yeah, can you imagine? I mean, it's all about money, and can you imagine the money that that would make? It, 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 would, it would be taken out of places like Thomas and Mack, and we have to be going to a huge stadium. It, potentially, it could be Chuck Liddell versus, versus Dan Henderson, or Chuck yeah. Liddell versus Vanderlei Silva. That alone is worth the card. That alone is worth the card. Right. Now put Fedor Melnyenko, the heavyweight champion for Pride, versus, right now it's Tim Sylvia. Very soon, it could be Randy Couture, and even after that, it could be Crow Cop by the time this comes together. So. You're talking some great bouts that could happen very soon, very quickly. But you know how organizations are. There's a lot of politics involved. We'll see how things get worked oh, out. I want to see it happen. Another thing I want to see happen, we always talk about it. Uh, how long would it take for you to put a guy like me to sleep or, or knock me out? Um, like, I, like, I run about like 165. Shut Buck up. 65. Yeah. Okay, first of all, eat a bagel, have a little rice. Yeah, well, you know, I carry it well, though. You You're know? six foot seven, 165 pounds. What's okay. your problem? <laughs> but not me, though. I've got to continue to talk, so we want to have my stand in double come in. AC, come on in. My stand in. Let's AC. see how big a boy he is. Let's see. Oh, uh, oh, AC a... runs a little bit bigger. Yeah, so he's not. Uh... Now, we're going to have a little demonstration here. AC, my stand in. He's my stunt double. Have Put a, him have down. A seat. I'm going to step away just so uh, we can check it out in AC. Norm uh, normally, I would good do luck, a my man, but yeah. Uh, but he's such a big guy, I don't want to take the yeah. risk of him falling down on yeah. me. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, let me take my watch off so I don't hurt you. Yeah, too we bad. don't want any scratches. Now, you know, you know how to tap, right? So if you see the curtain close, the curtain starts to close on you. Just all you have to do is tap my arms and have my arms around your neck. Like yep, that's all you got to do, and I'll stop. I promise you, I promise you. I'll let go very quickly, okay? And, and if anything happens, I'll, do you snore when you sleep? Do you snore? Yeah. I'm okay, if you black out, that's what's going to happen on camera. You start to snore, okay. okay? It's called a rear naked choke. I have a lot of familiarity with it because I've tapped He's out three times from it. He's a professional. So I understand his position very well. You, you sure? We okay? Yeah. You okay? You still okay? One. You okay? Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, <laughs> you okay? Oh, good night. Good night. Breathe. Take a big breath. Deep Take breath, big breath, buddy. Relax. Deep breath. That is beautiful. You all right? <laughs> Stay put. Don't How stand you doing? up. Don't stand up. <laughs> you okay? All right, why don't you sit right there? We're going to say thanks to Frank Trigg. Frank, Saturday night at the Thomas and Mack Pride Fighting Championships. As always, buddy, we appreciate it. We'll tend to him here in a minute. Wow. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on. That is great. Okay, so here it is. Tickets still available. Go to UNLVTickets.com for those action starts at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Gladiators kick off their Arena League season March 4th in Austin. And tonight showcasing their new squad over at the new home, the Orleans. Scrimmage was open to the public. Fans got a chance to see quarterback Sean King. It will be his first year in the Arena League. All right, that's it for this one. We got AC here. And AC, how was it? Tell us about it. You doing okay right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. It was pretty painful, man. Uh, <laughs> like he said, it was like a closed curtain. So. I don't know, man. I don't know, but again, stunt devil, <laughs> <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> All right, good deal.